let's um this is kind of a nice segue this next sec- section is going to be uh one that's inspired by one of our listeners um and it's a question that they sent into us from instagram um so this is from ada Rasid, and they said hi there kindly need advice which shoes should i look for when i have plantar fasciitis issue uh, they have flat feet and wide. I used to wear my Adidas Adi Zero One in seven and a half. Uh, my daily morning brisk walking, uh, they go for 30 to 35 kilometers. Thanks so much for your kindly advice. And so I think this this kind of brings us into the question, as, as always, hard for us to give specific advice to people. So we're going to take this concept and we're going to draw it out to a broader question of where does footwear come in when it comes to uh, plantar fascia pain. And we talked a little bit about some heel cups and where orthotics fit in and they're early. And that's pretty much it from, from what the, the large systematic reviews are showing right now. Um, but what do you guys think? How, and if, you know, what would you recommend for people who have kind of ongoing plantar fascia pain? What would you think? I think the initial part would be, again, as we've talked about this footwear type before, and it probably doesn't sound like we're suggesting this for everything, but it can be very helpful for foot and ankle related issues, is anything that has a rockered sole. And the reason why that's a great example is because, again, wait, David, can you bring, well, I know the pod, people on the podcast. So what shoe is that for the listeners? This is the Glide Ride 2. Yeah. So the Glide Ride has a very significant rocker, especially a toe spring which means that instead of having to extend your toe yourself as you toe off, the shoe does it for you. So you don't have to stress the plantar fascia as much. So rockered shoes take a lot of pressure off the plantar surface or the bottom of the foot or any of the structures there in your calf. And they do shift it up into the knee and hip. So it's not, forces don't disappear. So, but any kind of rockered shoe is something that we would suggest early on if that seems to be an ongoing issue for you. Um, it's a great way. And it's one of the things that I suggest for people that are in that early phase or they're having some trouble, or as Nathan would say, they're having that niggle that's going on. If it starts getting a little more serious, you do need to see someone, but it can be a nice tool to add to, you know, modifying and making sure this is going in the right direction. Yeah. And I think you would, I think I'd almost start with a more broader stroke before I jump to footwear entirely. Um, because I don't know if I would want to be walking 30 kilometers in a glide ride every day. Um, but I mean, in an acute phase, if money is not an option or I mean, if, yeah, if, if you don't have to worry about money and you can just get whatever pair of shoes just to help in the meantime, sure. A rocker can help a little bit, but I think it's more important to look at the endurance and stability of the, of the foot intrinsics, the ankle stability, proprioception, making sure all those stirrup muscles we're talking about, everything's working properly and you're able to actually walk that distance without repetitive irritation to the region. And so if you have to take a step back for a little bit and lower the distance, you don't even have to take a full break, depending, everyone's irritability is different, but um, you may have to have a little bit of activity modification initially and start addressing some impairments that might be there. Um, I don't know if I would jump to a shoe right away. Yep. It, and I think, this, I think we purposefully are putting the, so far in these last two episodes, we're purposely putting the shoe question last. Everyone asks us question about shoes, but I think we want to make an effort on our end, even though we talk about shoes all the time, like I said last time, we want to put the, the attention on everything else first. Shoes are one piece of the puzzle that aren't, aren't going to be the first one. So it's, again, I want to emphasize that just to, 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 again, how important this is. When any of the three of us, and injuries happen, okay? They happen to all of us. That's, you know, preventing anything is impossible because you never know what's going to come. When any of the three of us have like a little injury or a little niggle, we will modify our shoe choice to support what's, what we're trying to wear, we, what we know we need to do. But that is not the only thing. The biggest thing that we're going to start doing is going, how did I injure this? What do I need to start working on now from like a muscular standpoint, from working on making sure I maintain mobility? How much activity can I handle? A shoe can be part of that, but it is a part of the equation, not the whole thing. And this was something that I certainly, when I first started this website years ago, when I was working in running stores, made that mistake. And it took me a while, you know, to going through school and learning this stuff, being a clinician to go, please know a shoe or an orthotic or any of these things we talked about can be a great short-term tool. But please do not, uh, do not forget about the factors that you need to address, like your muscular strength, your mobility, why this is getting injured. Because if you don't address that, you can be risking a 
the flaring up again later because you need to address all the underlying factors, not just one component. Yeah. I think this is one of those other scenarios where, you know, they, a study just came out in the journal of orthopedic and sports physical therapy about um, they did a retro um, perspective analysis of like a previous study where they looked at how do motion control shoes um, change injury rates in people who have a history of uh, pronation related uh, um, injuries. And so plantar fascia pain can sometimes fall into that category. And so when it comes to footwear, people who have um, kind of that more chronic nature of plantar fascia pain, considering trying a, uh, a, a shoe that has some kind of pronation control built in could be a consideration. Doesn't mean that it's going to be the one that happens for you. And I think it needs that idea needs to be combined with other ideas of trying shoes like the comfort filter where that we've talked about a lot, where not only do you, we can't really match shoes to foot types right now, that's just not how it works, but there's some evidence to suggest that um, if you have a history of pronation related injuries, um, a motion control shoe might decrease that incident or the risk of it. And so if you can try a shoe that has some stability elements built in and it's comfortable, it could be worth considering that. That's not a strong recommendation for me, but it's, I think that's in the it's worth trying a stability shoe to see if you can find a comfortable one and then maybe trying it out. Anything else to add to her question? Thank you so much, um, Ada, for, for sending that in. You guys have anything else? What do you guys, so when David held up the glide ride, do you think it matters whether the shoe has a significant toe spring or heel bevel or both? What do you guys think? Yes. Um, what I was going to say is I, I, there are the shoe, do, do either of you have the magic speed? Uh, yeah, yeah. My magic speed. Oh, you know what? I think I just took them to the other room the other day. Okay. So don't worry about it. Bach, I the gave magic my speed. Bach. Um, has a toe spring that's built into the lat, like where your toes go up. So it brings your toes up. Whereas like the, uh, the shift is going to basically keep, or even the glide ride, but even the glide ride has a little one, but the shift keeps your toes pretty flat. And the toe spring is coming in from the sole of the shoe and it's pretty rigid. And so I think that plays, that plays a role um, right there in terms of, does it bring your toes up and is the sole flexible? If the sole's flexible, it doesn't really matter what the toe spring is. Like the Omni says it has its speed roll uh, inspired or whatever, but it's flexible enough where that's not going to assist in this scenario. Right. As so you, much. Wa you want a shoe that's it's got to be just right for you, a little stiffer, but you don't want the, the rocker toe spring so much that some shoes will hold your toes up in extension. That's going to just stress the plantar fascia all the time. You want that to be in a, I mean, wait. Yeah, yeah. It does that, right? Some people can handle that. Some people for this situation, I would not do that. You need a shoe that keeps your feet toes a little more neutral in that middle position while the toe spring comes up under it. Um, what do you guys think? How much of it? Yeah, go for it. I was going to ask kind of, cause there's the A6 glide ride um, sits and even the um, endorphin shifts that yep. the rocker is more forefoot oriented. Yep. What do you guys think more of like Hoka, um, the earlier stage rocker, um, and things like that. I, I personally, David, go. I think it just kind of depends on the model. I think Hoka in general does have that rocker design with the heel bevel and the toe spring. But if you look at a shoe like the Clifton, when you load it, it actually has a decent amount of flexibility up front with those, with those ridges, right. those flex grooves. So it's like, if you go to bend it, it's, it's somewhat rigid, but then if you actually step and load it, those things will flex. So I think, I think you just come back to the comfort factor again. The Arahi is the same way. The Bondi is probably the most rigid, but it's been a while since I've been in a Bondi. I actually, I'd be curious to see my thoughts going back into one. Um, I'm just going off of memory from, from a while ago. So mm -hmm. um, I think it would just depend on the model and that comfort factor again. I mean, even within that one company, a company makes a bunch of different kinds of shoes. It's not like Oh, ASICs, go to ASICs and they'll get, they'll take care of you. It's not as simple as that. No. So Please even if you that. look at a company like Hoka, where they do a rocker, I mean, you could look at the Elevon, the Arahi, the Clifton, the Bondi, they're all going to have different feels. They're all going to have different flexibility. Um, the Hupana, you know, like some are going to be flexible. Some are going to be rigid. Some are going to have a sharper rocker than others. So 
There are uh, certain there are yeah. certainly some certain companies that tend to do things a certain way, but don't just be like, oh well, for this injury, we always use this company. It's like, no, that's not how it works, you know, because the shoes are going to be so different, right? So if you say, oh, this is the company that always does this, and you choose a track spike, like obviously this, I'm just being super extreme, right? But that's not going to work very well. So I mean, I might um, have my speed evos around. Let me see. <laughs> The other thing I, I personally, for patients, this is going to get a little bit more advanced. And this is something you have to take a history and a clinician is going to be better at looking at this is looking at whether the irritation of the plantar fascia is coming from a stretch based injury, right? From loading it or from an impact based injury. And for a lot of those people that have more of an impact related injury, if they are a heel striker, I, and I'm biased when I say this, I like the shoe to have a little bit more significant heel bevel because it basically replaces the heel rocker. So you can the shoe helps roll you forward a little bit and maybe redirect a little bit of forces. I should comment that what I just stated isn't totally supported yet. We're still trying to figure out if it actually does that. But I personally like the shoe to have a little more of a heel rocker too if it's if they're getting a little bit more impact-related pain. And that'd be, hey, it hurts most when you land on it versus if you're towing off, that's when it hurts. So a heel, ro- a heel bevel and a toe spring in the right place, keeping your foot in the right place is something I, I value if you are looking for a shoe to help with this. That's a great distinction, Matt. Thanks. Yep.